Is AMD going to give PC builders and upgraders a reason to maybe skip the RTX 50 series? So Nvidia is dominating the discussion around next-gen GPUs with its upcoming Blackwell cards set to debut at CES 2025 in Las Vegas. But new cards from the red team should also be landing imminently, and although AMD isn't targeting the super high-end anymore, that doesn't mean you should ignore the upcoming RDNA 4 generation. Let's jump into what we know so far. First up, we're likely looking at the upcoming Radeon RX 8000 series, aka RDNA 4, at least initially being made up of just two GPUs. YouTube's Moore's Law is Dead points to two next-gen AMD GPUs being on their way, Navi 48 and Navi 44, an earlier high-end part codenamed Navi 41 having apparently been cancelled. And as we already touched on in the intro, these GPUs are looking like they won't be trying to match the very tip-top cards from Nvidia this time around. That means nothing approaching the performance of an RTX 4090 or indeed 5090, though based on the numbers being posited online by some leakers, AMD's higher-end Navi 48 GPU in particular could shake things up by bringing 4080 level power to a more affordable price point. Compared to the previous AMD generation, that would see performance of what would presumably be an RX 8800, coming in somewhere between an RX 7900 XT and XTX. That jives with an earlier and typically cryptic post from Twitter leaker All the Watts, indicating that Navi 48 would be slower than the very top end of the previous RDNA 3 generation. And fellow leaker Kepler L2 offered a very simple one-word response on Twitter when asked whether RDNA 4 would compete with Nvidia's 5080 or 5090. We should note, however, that we're only talking about rasterization performance here, i.e. performance without taking into account any more exotic features like AI-enhanced performance uplifts like DLSS or FSR. As always, expect some wiggle room depending on which brand your favorite titles might favor. In an interview with Tom's Hardware, AMD Senior VP Jack Hyun clearly pointed in the direction of the next generation of AMD GPUs being mass market offerings for the 80% of users in the middle, as opposed to the top 10% who might be looking at, say, an RTX 5090. So between this rumoured performance window and Intel's XE2 Battlemage cards likely matching a 4070 Super in terms of performance, early 2025 could be a really interesting time to be cross-shopping some mainstream performance GPUs, in stark contrast to the lack of competition for Nvidia in that tip-top 10%. As usual with upcoming GPUs though, we have to decode a somewhat tangled web of leaks to figure out exactly what might be coming and when. So let's start with what we know for sure. Ray tracing and AI performance looks set to get significant boosts in RDNA 4. AMD CEO Lisa Su recently stated on a call with investors and analysts that in addition to strong increases in gaming performance, RDNA 4 delivers significantly higher ray tracing performance and adds new AI capabilities. Now, ray tracing is a very obvious area for AMD to offer some improvement this gen, after it very clearly fell behind Nvidia in this area in the previous cycle. Still kind of a niche high, high-end feature, but it's also not going away anytime soon. Our new AI capabilities is a pretty broad statement, but it will be interesting to see how AMD applies that to gaming as opposed to general AI workflows. We know Nvidia has high ambitions for the future of its DLSS based on statements from big boss Jensen Huang, who recently spoke about using that kind of AI to conjure up background elements like buildings, vegetation, or even full-on background characters. Will AMD have an answer to this? And while AMD had made waves around a year ago with patents around MCM, multi-chip module GPUs, most of the recent leaks from the likes of Red Gaming Tech and MLID point to Navi 48 being a single monolithic GPU. MCM effectively involves bringing multiple GPUs together in a single package as opposed to soldering them separately onto the board. It allows for more efficient scaling of performance. It's believed MCM may have been on the cards for Navi 41, that's the cancelled high-end and RDNA 4 GPU. As it stands though, Navi 48 seems to be what we're getting, and it's generally believed to just be a traditional single big old GPU. The first RDNA 4 GPU to arrive then should be Navi 48, believed to be the RX 8800, the higher end part, following an announcement of RDNA 4 at CES 2025, which is pretty much a lock based on previous statements from Lisa Su, we can expect Navi 48 to land sometime during the first quarter of 2025, based on tweets from leaker Kepler L2. The mid-tier Navi 44 should follow in Q2. Both GPUs are said to be built on TSMC's N4P process, no real surprises there. 
It's also believed both flavors of RDNA4 will use GDDR6 memory as opposed to the newer GDDR7 likely to feature in Nvidia's upcoming top-end cards. Again, it's speculated that GDDR7 may have been destined for Navi 41 before its cancellation, but alas, that's not to be. Leaks from Moore's Law is Dead indicate a 256-bit bus and 20 gigabit speeds for VRAM used in the higher-end Navi 48, and that's apparently corroborated by leaker Kepler L2 in a tweet detailing three memory configurations for RDNA 4. The top two with the 256-bit bus may be two different flavors of RX 8800. That info lines up with another cryptic tweet from All The Watts, which suggests the existence of as many as three Navi 48 variants, and also points to infinity cache specs for those flavors of RDNA 4 GPU, 64 or 48 megabytes for Navi 48, and 32 for Navi 44. Infinity cache, of course, is the newer type of cache memory introduced a couple of generations ago to cut down on the need for higher bandwidth memory buses. Basically saves you traffic on that memory bus. So far, we have exactly one Geekbench leak providing some clues about at least one piece of RDNA4 hardware. The leaked equipment carrying the board ID name GFX1201 is believed to be Navi48 based and comes equipped with 56 compute units or 3584 stream processors. It's clocked a hair over 2.1 gigahertz, though that's likely due to it being an engineering sample, final clocks should be significantly higher. Exactly how much higher is anyone's guess, though leaks from Moore's Law is Dead and others have speculated somewhere around the 3.3 GHz mark, which would be a healthy bump over the previous gen. Navi 44, meanwhile, that's your likely RX 8600 midranger, looks like featuring a 192-bit bus with 19 gigabit per second memory. Leaks from Benchlife also indicate that there may be at least two variants of Navi 44 as well. Navi 44 is said to be significantly smaller in terms of its die size as well, so expect a proportional trimming of those CUs and clock speeds. Other specs remain elusive. The Navi 48 Geekbench leak suggests 16 gigs of VRAM for that chip, and that's about all we know. We know from Lisa Su's earlier comments that the first RDNA 4 GPUs should be breaking cover in early 2025, and CES would be as good a venue as ever for that unveiling. AMD is undoubtedly in an underdog position compared to Nvidia with its now multi-trillion market cap, so it'd be an opportunity to steal some of the limelight for its own GPUs as Jensen prepares to take the wraps off the RTX 5000 series. And as I said, we also know AMD is very much targeting a mainstream audience with these new graphics cards, and you'd expect to see that reflected in their price. That's especially true this year, as new Radeon and GeForce cards are likely to be launched right on top of each other at CES, and with AMD's top-end offering likely going up against Nvidia's most interesting, the mainstream tier RTX 5070. A lot of the speculation online is around a potential $500 to $600 MSRP for the RX 8800 in particular, and if AMD is able to match Nvidia 4080 tier performance in rasterization and maybe even ray tracing as well, things could certainly start to look a lot more competitive for GPU buyers going into 2025. If it misses the mark, well, Nvidia already has plenty of great cards for ray tracing and AI upscaling already in this ballpark, including the 4070 Super available even now for as little as $600. And towards the middle of the range, it'll be interesting to see how Navi 44 pricing lands, especially in the context of Intel finally launching its second generation ARC cards in the coming weeks, as the $400 to $500 mark has been posited as a possible landing zone for those Battle Mage based cards. So one thing's for sure, nailing this launch will be key for AMD as it repositions its lineup towards mainstream performance users following consecutive quarters of decline in its gaming revenue. So what do you think? Can Team Red pull it out of the bag and bring some heat to Nvidia in 2025, even with Intel potentially nipping at its heels with new Battle Mage GPUs? Share your thoughts down in the comments, stick around and subscribe for more hardware coverage soon. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.